Hi, I'm Aaron Lopresti. I've been a comic book artist, commercial illustrator, and writer for over 25 years. And this is my YouTube channel. Today, with episode four, we're going to take a slight break from the garbage man work to do a segment that I like to call What's on My Walls. So let's take a look. Okay, let's start with the uh, legendary Mike Plug. This is a painting I got from Mike way back in, boy, I want to say 1993, somewhere right around the time when he had done his uh, card set. Um, this was at a show in Seattle. He had all the originals. And um, he had this one, oh, the Abominable Snowman, for sale along with many others. But this was sort of in my price range, but uh, it still wasn't because I wasn't making very much money at that period of time in my career. So I remember spending the entire show uh, talking him down in price, you know, convincing him if he gave me a deal on it, I would never sell it. And um, he finally did. He finally came down and almost cut the price in half. So it actually had enough money to uh, to buy it. And it was uh, actually every penny I made at that show in Seattle, I spent on this uh, abominable snowman painting from his uh, card set. Now this is an acrylic painting. Let me zoom in a little bit here so we can get some detail. But as you can see, it's pretty classic plug. And it's just one of the other uh, things about it was that he said it was one of his least favorite paintings of the entire set. So that kind of helped him to come to the decision that he could give it to me at a great price because he didn't really care for it that much anyway and I loved it. Okay, this is part two to the Plug story. About a year later, uh, my wife and I were at a show in, in uh, Portland, Oregon and um, Mike was there again and had some remnants of his uh, card art still with him, but he had a lot of the prelims. And he had met my wife the year before and was so taken with her that he offered her this piece and just said, I want you to have it, Shelley. And so I found that um, other artists seem to like my wife better than they like me. I'm gonna have to work on that. But uh, so this was a gift from Mike Plug to my wife, Shelley, which was the prelim or is the prelim to the Abominable Snowman painting that's uh, hanging right next to it here. Now this is a kind of a Thor frog uh, illustration by uh, Walter Simonson. Um, a lot of people uh, would like a Simonson original, but they're pretty hard to get. And I, uh, oh, I have three. And they were all part of a gift package that uh, Walter sent to me, my son, and my wife. We each got a separate piece and it was completely unexpected. Um, I had been bugging him for a while about doing something for my son who at the time was like 12 years old and uh, Walt spent a great deal of time with him at a Megacon in Florida at one show and was super nice to him and I was trying to talk him into doing a, you know, a piece for my son and uh, so he was like, well, I don't really do you know, con commissions at shows. He said, but I'll tell you what, if you can find me, my son was really into hero clicks at the time, he said, if you can find me a Beta Ray Bill hero click. He said this to my son. He goes, I will, I'll trade you that for a, you know, a Beta Ray Bill sketch. And so we were like, yeah, I grabbed him by the hand and drug him around the show, you know, we found the, we found the hero click and gave it to Walter. And um, he said, okay, I'll do one at home for you and I'll send it to you. And we said, well, thanks. You know, we we're very excited to, for that. And then, you know, I don't know, it was a month or two later, this big package showed up in the mail and it had three not sketches, but finished inked drawings. One of them was this uh, Thor frog for my wife, Shelley. And um, I'll show you the other two pieces here in, in a minute. This is the Thor piece that showed up with the Thor frog piece. And this one is uh, signed to me uh, from Walter. And that was my dog snorting in the background. Apologize for that. Um, anyway, anybody that knows Walter and Louise Simonson knows what terrific and wonderful people they are. And, uh, I had the privilege of actually staying at uh, Walter's house on two different occasions where I got to look through all of his artwork and it was a pretty amazing time. But uh, we are eternally grateful for uh, this gift that uh, that he, he sent us uh, several years ago um, of the three uh, illustrations. Uh, so now let's go take a look at the Beta Ray Bill. 
this is the one that was made out to my son. This is the Beta Ray Bill illustration that he did. Um, these are all on like 14 by 18 paper, so they're not small. So again, it uh, was a pretty amazing thing that we, we were able to, to get these and that Walter was uh, kind enough to do these for us and then uh, send them off. All right, moving right along. This is a page from um, Marvel Premiere number 38. This was not the very first Weird World story, but it's like second or third, uh, certainly the first color one. Um, and this is Mike Plug inked by Alex Nino. And it's one of my favorite stories um, from when I was a kid. This is probably about 1978. And I got this on eBay. It had been sitting up there for, I mean, almost a year. And um, the guy would drop the price, raise the price, drop the price, raise the price. And I just kept watching it. But I was like, oh, I can't spend the money. I can't spend the money. My wife finally came up and she said, what is that art you're looking at on eBay? And I go, I told her what it was. And she's like, my gosh, you've been watching that forever. And I said, yeah. She goes, why don't you get it? And I'm like, oh, I can't spend that kind of money on it. And she's like, well, what if I get it for you for a birthday present? I said, no, I can't allow you to spend that kind of money. And she goes, no, I really want to. And I said, well, okay. And uh, so that's how I got it. So it's, this was a gift from my wife, but uh, it was pretty darn cool. And um, if you're not familiar with this story, I would uh, suggest you go check it out. It's a pretty cheap book, but just such a, a unique and interesting combination of Plug inked by Alex Nino, in my opinion, makes it worthwhile just to get it. And it has both the elf characters in it, plus this dragon. So it's one of the better pages, probably one of the top two pages in this story. Okay, I recently picked this up with them last year at uh, for Comic Link auction, and it was really a fantastic price. It went for well under $1,000, which surprised me. And um, this is a page from uh, one of the three Marvel Super Specials that they did in 1978 or 79. They were uh, full-color Weird World stories, um, just like the previous piece we looked at, um, written by Doug Mensch. And um, these were illustrated by John Buscema and inked by Rudy Nebres, again, two of my uh, favorites from the 70s. Um, and of course, John Buscema being one of my favorites all times, just because his inherent drawing ability, just his figure work and everything is just an unbelievable good. Um, but anyway, so I couldn't pass up an opportunity as this was one of my favorite childhood books as well. Let's zoom in a little bit here so you can see this better. But you have some of your elves in there in the story and that's that character is called Mudbutt. Uh, he was kind of the old sagely elf that they hung with or dwarf or whatever he was. The interesting thing about this page and all the Marvel Super uh, Special pages from the Weird World story was they were penciled, inked, and watercolor painted on the board. So there's no overlays. This is all one process on the board. So Buscema would draw it, Nebraz would take the page and ink it, and then hand it off to Peter Ledger, who did the coloring using watercolors and um, airbrush and, and some of it. This appears all to be... Um, Paintbrush, watercolor, no airbrush on here. Okay, this is kind of cool, and it's not uh, regular comic book art. This is from uh, Peter DeSev, who um, is probably most famous for his New Yorker covers. Uh, he also has done some children's books, and he also did the uh, film design work on movies like Robots and Ice Age. Uh, so, fairly uh, prominent illustrator. Um, but he's made his rounds through Comic-Con. He's been there a couple times uh, over the years, and he was set up at Stuart Ng's booth, who's a bookseller, um, and he, his sketchbook had just come out, and so he was uh, signing the sketchbooks, but he also had several originals for sale. And thankfully, this was a show that I did fairly well at in San Diego, one of the years I did fairly well at, and so my wife was with me, so I didn't have to... Uh, uh, beg and plead too much. I just brought her over, showed her the stuff, and we looked at it and decided which one um, 
we liked the best. And I think, I think she liked another one, but I just, the elephant in the pajamas, I just was like, man, I gotta get this. And so I did. So I have an original Peter de Seb, which I think is uh, pretty darn cool. That's all watercolor, uh, pen and ink, and then watercolor over the top of the... I'll zoom in here real quick before we cut out. Oops. Okay, and sitting right next to the Peter de Sev uh, illustration is this oil painting by uh, Scott Gustafson. And if you don't know who Scott is, uh, you should look him up. Uh, he does a lot of um, children's books, nursery rhymes, uh, that type of thing. Just a terrific illustrator. Uh, and works almost exclusively with, in children's books. But he does limited edition prints and stuff, but it always has to do with nursery rhymes or fairy tales or that type of stuff. Um, so uh, he was at the Spectrum show in Kansas City, and um, he had several oil paintings there. This was a smaller one. Um, it's about, I don't know, 9 by 12, maybe 10 by 12, somewhere in that neighborhood. and. Um, you know, and, I, and he had them at what I thought were just ridiculously fair prices. Uh, I wouldn't say cheap, but I was surprised. And so I immediately called my wife and said, I got to get one of these. And, you know, uh, she was totally on board, so I did. And um, I just liked um, the old guy, as I tend to like uh, crotchety old men for some reason to draw them anyway. Um, and I guess I'm becoming one, so maybe that's why I like him. But... Again, this is an oil painting, and uh, it's featured in one of his uh, nursery rhyme books. Okay, and right next to that one, I have another Gustafson piece. I got also at Spectrum, but a different year, I think two years later. This is interesting because it's a uh, color study um, for several paintings, that he, illustrations that he was doing for his Jack and the Beanstalk book. Um, so what this is is about, a, mm, I'm going to say... 8 by 15-ish sized um, piece of paper, watercolor board, that what he did was he printed out the pencil drawings, or the black and white, on this paper, and then he hand-painted each one of them um, before he did the actual finished paintings, so he had a really good idea, color-wise, of what he wanted to do before he got started, and most painters will do that, and maybe that's something I'll talk about in depth in another episode. It's an inexpensive, but super cool, original piece of artwork um, to get, get your hands on if you can't afford something really, really major. That's what's on my wall. What's on yours? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. You can also hit the notification button to get alerts when I post a new video. Make sure you come back by soon so you can check out my next episode.